Hey garden lovers, spring is here. I am so excited for this growing season. I'm going to have much more time in the garden soon, so much more time to make gardening content. And we'll finally get our store launched where we will have handcrafted home and garden decor, some garden art, and our SCG seed collections available. And midsummer, we'll have our small batch hot sauce trio available, and we'll get more gardening resources added and updated. This was fun. We picked up this tomato plant from Parkview Nursery in the fall. The tag just said winter tomato. So not sure of the variety name, but here we are mid-March harvesting some tomatoes. We'll see how they taste this weekend. We've been harvesting cool season veggies, but we are seeing lots of cool season veggies already starting to bolt, like this beautiful mustard. It's that time of year, there is a ton going on in the garden. It's time to start direct sowing some warm season veggies and lots of chili pepper seedling care going on. We have a constant battle in the greenhouse of ants farming aphids, that's, that's the main one, but we did have fungal gnat issues this year when we normally don't. We'll stop by the greenhouse in a little bit. But before we get into it, this month's seed giveaway is some Ugani cucumber seeds and some sugar baby watermelon seeds. We'll be giving away to the first 15 people to like, share, and comment Spring is Here. Then head over to southerncaliforniagardening.net to the contact us page. This way we can email you to get the address you would like your seed sent to. Plus you can check out your last frost date and your growing zone also on our website at the growing page. And subscribe to follow along and grow with us. We're having monthly giveaways, monthly planting, sowing and growing videos, and growing tips on how to grow food in a hot deserty climate. All right, there is so much going on in the month of March from direct sowing warm season veggies to lots of chili pepper seedling care. We have lots of tomato seedlings in the greenhouse also, but they don't need the care that these baby chili pepper seedlings need. And it's been one thing after another from a ton of cloudy weather, which we don't normally get. So these guys have been growing slow and their soil has been remaining too moist to these darn ants farming aphids. It's been a constant battle to keep the aphids out of the center of the new leaf growth. We've been experimenting with a few approaches with the small seedlings, but it seems I keep going back to smashing them and it's hard to get my fingers into the tiny little leaf growth. It's like doing surgery. I want to make sure that I don't damage the new leaves coming out. They're barely opening, but those aphids sure can get down there. And the Dr. Bronner soap and water mixture is perfect for the more mature chili pepper plants. But when they're little babies, I'm trying to make sure that the soil doesn't stay too moist and the insecticidal soap needs to be sprayed off after about a half hour to avoid leaf burn. Plus, this is the first year we've had a fungal gnat issue, which is pretty common, but for us in the greenhouse, normally uh, it gets nice and warm so the soil dries out pretty quick. This year, not so much. It hasn't been warming up in the greenhouse like it normally does. And that's why you see the sand that's topped on top of the seedling soil. We did try diatomaceous earth mixture in a spray bottle with water, and it worked really well, but I'm just not a big fan of DE. Number one, it's harmful for the pollinators, but you know, obviously we don't have pollinators in the greenhouse. But number two, it's bad to breathe, and I already have bad lungs, so I just wasn't comfortable using it. So back to insecticidal soap and just manually removing them. We have an older video that we did that goes into how we battle aphids 
with much more detail. I'll attach a link in the upper right hand corner. We're growing 75 varieties this year and you're probably thinking, what do you do with all those chili peppers? Well, we make salsas, hot sauces, we make our own spices, we dry them for the year, we freeze them, preserving them for our meals throughout the year. Plus, I'm just fascinated with chili peppers. The creation itself amazes me, but they are so unique and beautiful. They have so many beautiful colors, shapes, sizes, and flavors. So we get a jump on the chili pepper growing season each year by starting them on heat mats and moving them into the greenhouse. But there's still lots of time to start chili peppers and you can grab starts from a local nursery. You could also direct sow pretty soon. The soil is going to be warming up to around 80 degrees in a few weeks. And you could just direct sow some chili pepper seeds. As a matter of fact, um, our overwintered chili plants in a few weeks, we're going to have all kinds of baby chili pepper plants popping up underneath the overwintered because of the little pods that have fallen and decomposed and then the seeds just seeded themselves. And then at that point, I'm going to try to move them around and because I have a hard time throwing out any plants, but especially little chili pepper plants. This month you can direct sow lots of warm season veggies like tomatoes. You can see here under our overwintered chilies that are waking up, here is a baby tomato plant. It's popping up on its own, probably from a tomato that dropped here last season. And often that's a good indicator that it's time to grow that veggie. So we're getting ready to transplant a lot of our tomato plants into their permanent growing location. We have a fun story about this tomato plant that we will be sharing soon as a YouTube short and on Instagram and TikTok. Plus, I'm sure I'm going to miss and not include plenty that's going on in the garden, so I'll be doing short clips throughout the week. We're making sure that our tomato plants have lots of nutrients. I added some Dr. Earth fertilizer, it's high in calcium, and there is lots of compost mixed in with this soil. This is an incredible variety. You gotta grow it. It's True Black Brandywine by Baker Creek. Here we have a cute little guy, little earthworm growing in the tomato container, and we have an update, and I'll do a short clip also, but the earthworms that were growing in the chili pepper container it's all positive. Um, it definitely, the issue was not earthworms, too many earthworms in the container because we have one of our Thai chili plants that have a ton of earthworms in there, been growing in there the whole time and the plant's doing great. So our issue was definitely an overwatering issue, which is funny because I'm always saying not to overwater chili pepper starts, but we definitely had some issues in the greenhouse this year with all the cloudy, stormy weather. And I'm giving our baby tomato transplants some diluted liquid fertilizer for some readily available nutrients for their young root system. Also, I try to remember to mist off the leaves after feeding it the liquid fertilizer so that they don't get leaf burn. I picked up this cute wooden container. It's like a little mini version of a whiskey barrel from Tractor Supply Store. And I believe it was about $17. If it's similar to some of our other whiskey barrels, it should last quite a few years. And it looks beautiful. Beans are popping up all over the place from last season's bean pods. Here is a Kentucky Wonder. Kentucky Wonder is my favorite green bean variety. And we're also growing Blue Lake now that all danger of frost is gone. And we have some beautiful black bean varieties we're growing. We grew Black Coat last season. It had gorgeous pods and beautiful pink beans. The hummingbirds love the red blossoms. And it's our first time growing Black Knight. 
What a gorgeous bean. This month starts our succession planting of cucumbers. And then we'll use shade cloths when the heat gets here. Right now we are starting off with straight eight and we have a new variety we're trying, Slice Max. It says it performs well under hot conditions, so we'll see how that does. And Suyo Long, which is mainly seedless. We're also trying a new trellis. We'll do a YouTube short on the assembly, and this is a new growing area for us. We moved a couple things around. The container behind the cucumber container is turmeric and it wasn't growing as well in a shady area, so I think it's gonna love it here. And we're planting more potatoes. We've been harvesting potatoes. You may have seen our harvest video on Instagram, and these guys are left over from a farm box. They started sprouting buds, and we had some room, so we're gonna get these guys divided, making sure that we've got at least two good buds then I'm gonna get a nice layer of compost on top so that the rains that are still coming will feed in the nutrients and the irrigation sprinklers will also water nutrients in. We saw lots of seed potatoes at Parkview Nursery and also at the tractor supply store. You can see here they've got asparagus, potatoes, got these beautiful purple potatoes. I love growing purple potatoes. They had a few berry starts left, so I grabbed a couple thornless blackberries. And I should have looked before leaving because there was a couple of plants that I thought didn't make it on Berry Row. This one's very healthy. This is a triple crown and we get delicious, huge blackberries from it. But a few of the others look like they weren't, didn't make it from last season. And I should have known because berry roots are so tenacious. So although they're not doing as well as this triple crown, you can see this beautiful new cane coming out. There is some new growth happening. Here's one of those berries I was talking about. Looks delicious. The large trees growing on the other side of this fence line has made growing food in this bed difficult. That's why we put berry bushes here and asparagus. And so you can see these guys are, they're trying to do something. And since berry bushes are such vigorous growers, they're gonna win and we'll definitely end up having some nice berry plants on this fence line but it may take a little while. Here's some beautiful asparagus. In February's planting, sowing, and growing video, we were sowing carrots in this whiskey barrel and we were trying out a new soil from Paradise Nursery. It's their 50-50 mix, so it's half compost, half dirt, and it ended up being way too dense so we're using it, um, but we're mixing in a bunch of more compost and some vermiculite because it was just way too dense. So we're basically starting over with the, our carrots in this whiskey barrel. And since I had a couple of leftover potatoes, we're gonna stick them in half and one half of the side. And then in the other half, we will restart our carrots. And we're still succession planting radishes. I started some under, actually it was in front of this giant mustard a few weeks ago. And I was doing a trial because we have the shade cloth over. It's a 50% shade cloth. And I was curious if the radishes would bulb out or if they get too leggy. Basically, if they were getting enough sun through and I think it was gonna be fine, except the, this beautiful mustard is growing so huge, it ended up covering the radishes, and of course I plant something and then just move on because I'm so time limited, um, but the mustard leaves grew over the irrigation sprinkler and blocked the water uh, from the spinach and the radishes, so 
Anyway, I'm gonna start those over, um, start some more radishes under this shade cloth and in another area. So this looks like a good spot to sow some radish seeds. We're gonna have a huge, beautiful husky cherry tomato growing in this whiskey barrel, but since radishes grow so super fast, we'll be able to get a couple of rounds in here before the tomato plant takes over. And we're succession planting more kohlrabi. Kohlrabi is so easy to grow and it grows year round in SoCal. This guy's super overgrown, but our veggies never go to waste. This one, the chicks are gonna enjoy. All I have to do is split it down the middle, open it up and, and they will devour it. And we're coming up on the window closing to grow spinach in SoCal. But there are a couple of varieties that have proven to do pretty good in some hotter temperatures. One of them's Bloomsdale, I've mentioned it before, and also Sun Angel. And actually Sun Angel, we'll see how it does when the temps heat up, but it says it performs pretty well in higher temperatures. But ultimately, um, spinach just can't be grown when high temperatures come in and we'll be getting really creative planting it under the canopy of some tomato plants. Look at, you can see this one's growing under the nasturtium and they'll grow in complete shade. They'll just grow a lot slower. If you live in an area where your low temps are 50 or above, then now is a great time to direct sow some corn. We're going to be trying this sweet corn variety by Burpee. And as I was looking at the corn bed, I noticed that about half of it was shaded. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it over the next couple of weeks. I wanna make sure that this bed is getting full sun. I want them all to grow at the same rate. And if some of them are in partial shade, they'll grow much slower. We want them to be getting their tassels all around the same time so that pollination occurs properly and all of the ears kernels develop. In this area, we'll be growing watermelon and cantaloupe. So we're preparing the area by potting up some of the Chandler strawberry runners. They ended up taking over this entire area and I got some help getting a bunch of the runners potted up and we will have quite a few Chandler bare root strawberries available for sale on our website very soon. So over the next week, I will get all of these little guys potted up and then get some compost down and then direct sow some watermelon seeds. We'll be growing a few varieties this season, some in this area, some in a raised bed, and we'll be trellising some. Watermelon roots don't like being disturbed, so it's best to either direct sow or if picking up transplants from a nursery, pick ones that are small, that are just starting out. These roots won't be as far along as a more mature seedling and will do much better when transplanting. This season, we're gonna try some Black Jewel from Baker Creek. Last season, I really liked the Sugar Baby Bush by Baker Creek, so gonna grow that again. And these little guys will be trellising. And Blacktail Mountain, one of the earliest heirlooms, grows well in the heat and in drought conditions. We'll also be growing Charantes, it's a French heirloom melon, and some of our homegrown hearts of gold. If you follow us on Instagram or TikTok, you probably saw the post of the high winds taking down our peas. And here's Jet, he's been sneaking a bunch of peas. They are piled up on the table waiting for me to harvest seeds. But it all worked out because we need to trellis some tomatoes on our arch very soon. And we'll get these peas trellised on our cattle panel. Vertical gardening space. It's a really cute design. I'll attach the link in the upper right hand corner. Check it out. We got some seed saving going on. This was 
a really great variety of broccoli that we plan on growing year after year. I think it was Green Comet, but I gotta find the tag. And this month we are sowing so many flowers. I'm researching dahlia tuber splitting. These dahlias have went crazy in this raised bed and I want the raised bed for growing food. So I'm gonna divide up the tubers and plant them all throughout the garden. And I'm already seeing signs of dahlia growth. So I really need to get moving. I'm wrapping up this video and I just realized I forgot to mention lettuce. We are succession planting lettuce year round, but it's time for us to switch to a more heat tolerant lettuce since the heat is right around the corner. So I'll do a short um, clip on that because we're also going to be starting our lettuce trial. We got a bunch of sunflowers that are going to get popped in all over the place. This area is gonna have lots of cosmos, poppies, dahlias, more Italian dandelions. The girls love Italian dandelions and they're a cut and grow, so we just cut them at the soil level and they grow back. And I'll be starting more Palo Rosa Radicchio and lots of weeding that needs to occur. This is a tobacco plant and boy, is it a pain in the butt to remove. All right, that's it for now. For more short videos on how to grow food in a hot deserty climate, hit the subscribe button and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. And remember, something doesn't come from nothing. This is a mind blowing creation. I hope you guys enjoy your week and enjoy your garden.